All right, guys, we survived one snowstorm. Today it's warm, it's melting, so we have another one coming. These are back-to-back -back storms with a day in between. Today we're gonna put on some tires. All right, guys, so that first storm wasn't much of anything. I did plow snow. Um, I did have this out running around in the snow. It's a little bit, uh, it should have chains on by rights, and I have them, so why not put them on? Uh, there are many ways to put tire chains on. Uh, you can lay them on the ground and drive over them and then pull them up that way. Um, I always opt for jacking up the one side and putting them on that way. Throwing them over the top and spinning the wheel around. Um, just because I find this is the easiest way. I don't know, you guys can do it whichever way works best for you. Um, but I like to do it this way on account of there's no weight on the tire and it's not jammed up, it's up in the air. And you can basically adjust these uh, any way you need them. I always find that when you put them on the ground and drive over them, you have a hard time really getting them tight. If you're sitting on part of the chain and it's bunched up, uh, this way it just seems like there's maybe one extra step uh, of adjusting and tightening that you don't need to deal with. Um, just throw a jack under it, jack it up, and then throw them over the top and then uh, you can tighten them up that way. I don't have very many bungees in my inventory. Most of mine are dry rotted and uh, are gonna break if you pull on them. Um, I have to see if I can't find a couple. It's always good to put a couple across just to help keep them uh, solid and keep them on the tire. Uh, these tire chains do fit. I was worried, I was wondering because I did not, uh, did not try them yet. And being that this is the first time I put them on, another trick that I like to do is take some paint or some type of a mark or something and mark which link is the link you use. Um, once you have them tight and they're where they need to be, if you have one link marked on each side, you know right where they have to go. It'll save you a lot of time when you go to put them on in the future. Uh, if you know which link, you should be able to use the same one every time. Um, so I'm gonna do that so I know that this is the link I wanna use. Um, this style, there's a hook on this side and it just hooks through a chain. And then on the other side, of course, you have one of these real long levers that you find a link and you pull it over center and tuck it in. So the other thing you wanna make sure when you put tire chains on, a lot of guys know this, but I have seen this before. Uh, we had tractors coming to the dealership. The chains have to be on the right way. There is a inside right and inside out. <laughs> so um, you always want the link to be laying against the tire and the hooks coming out and the, where it curls over, that's the outside. So if your hooks are on the inside rubbing the tire, that's no good. This is the, uh, the way tire chains should be installed. So I got this side on already. Like I say, jack it up, throw them over, crank it down. Um, so I have the chains for the other side. This is not the crappy Volkswagen car that uh, is my wife's. This one is mine. Uh, I'll get into a video on this. I do have a repair video coming on this. Not a repair, mainly a maintenance video. Um, this car I really love. This was one of Volkswagen's uh, better cars, I think. Uh, 2004 Passat, and it is four-wheel drive all the time. I love the four-wheel drive. It's a real high mileage car, but it's, uh, it's nice to have uh, even in the winter time. This will go through the snow about as good as my truck will, as long as you're not using the bumper as a snow plow. So we have a maintenance video coming on that. So I just pulled it inside here in the shop. Usually it's not in the shop, but get it out of the weather. So I wanna get the chains on the other side uh, and I'll uh, move the jack over and uh, we'll get into it. All right, so these uh, utility series tractors from uh, International and Case IH make it real easy on you to jack up. I always like to go under this uh, bolster here or a bracket for the drawbar. Very solid steel. Um, and you can lift pretty heavy on them. Uh, this jack actually I bought when I had my Massey 750 combine um, hydraulic bottle jack. I don't know how many tons it is. The It's faded off. It might be a 20 ton somewhere in there. Uh, but this was able to lift up the uh, front of the combine so I could service the final drives. So um, it is a imported brand. Uh, so you don't want to lay under anything without a jack stand. Um, I do believe in buying American wherever possible, but I also believe in uh, when your local hardware store has a 20 ton hydraulic bottle jack for about 25 bucks, even though it is made overseas. Um, 
I'm not opposed to saving any type of money. <laughs> so just want to make sure you throw a jack stand under. And actually, I've had this pretty many years. This goes back to about 2008, um, which I guess isn't that long, depending on how you measure time. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't leak down when this tire was flat. I had it sitting on this for almost two, three weeks, and it didn't move at all. So, hey, if it works, it's good enough. So let's get these chains on this side now. All right, so putting on tire chains isn't rocket science, but there are still people that uh, don't get quite get it right, like I said, with these hooks being the wrong way. And actually, even I goofed a little bit. Um, not that it's major, not that it's going to affect anything, but I should have put this chain... I have a glare from that sun. I should have put this chain on that, that side and that chain on this side just because that ratchet uh, hook here is now on the inside. Uh, it might be a little bit better if it was on the outside. I don't think it's gonna hit anything, but um, still, it should have been the other way. I'm not gonna change it, but I have to, uh, when I mark these, uh, mark the links somewhere, even when I go to put them away, if I put a tag on them that says right and left, it'll make it a lot easier down the road. Um, so anyway, like I say, we throw it over the top. You can see here, I turned the tire a little bit here. We just turned it here to get the uh, chain underneath. Now you can bring the links up and connect them and uh, basically just keep working them until they're as tight as you can get them. All right, so now they're on. You see how they're fairly tight, but you don't, if you can really crank them down, that's not always the best either. You don't want them squeezing the tire to the point where it's gonna do damage to your tire. So that's pretty good. Um, and another tip and trick, if you're concerned, or if you were, if your chains are a little loose, uh, if you have this style, now there's many different styles to uh, hook up your chains and make your connection. If you're, if you have this style with this over center uh, lever with the hook, you can tie this shut too if you want. You can just put a, a real heavy zip tie or something around it just to hold it in place. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm not concerned about it. These are on here pretty tight, and they're not to the point where the chain can't move a little bit and have a little bit of give. So I did find four bungees. <laughs> so I did put two on this side just as an extra precaution. It's probably not necessary. I just like to have them on. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe because everybody just does it. Uh, I don't know. I have them on now. I'll leave them on. Uh, one thing I want to readjust this side. I did make a mistake, and I'll point that out right now. This hook here, you see how it's facing into the tire? That's not the best. Um, if you can get it, all I have to do is unhook it and turn it and hook it the opposite way. You don't want these hooks digging into your tire. You want everything to be faced, all the sharp edges and everything you want facing out. So let me make a readjustment on this uh, chain on this side. But we'll throw these bungees on and I don't know why I don't have any bungees I have no idea and that one's even a little short to try to well, I'll mess with that but let me readjust the other side to do it right but you can see how it is on this side that's the correct way right there um, it's actually a little bit loose but I don't think I can go another no there's no way I can go another link so there's where your bungees will take up a little bit of that so, all right, I'm gonna re readjust here and make some corrections. All right, so this might not stay on. It might, it might not. Whatever happens, happens. Uh, we're gonna use uh, a zip tie here to uh, mark which link is the link we're gonna use uh, every time, um, just to make sure that uh, when I put it on, it'll save time next time. Um, it is a red tractor, so we will use uh, red zip ties <laughs> and i have a funny story about that um this formal super c here you've heard me talk about it many times um the guy who actually painted this tractor i didn't paint this tractor it was my uh, uh wife's grandfather my grandfather-in-law he painted this tractor and uh he has a pretty extensive collection of john deere two-cylinder tractors he's kind of a Kind of turned John Deere over the years, even though they farmed the, the farm tractors were all international. His uh, two cylinder collection was just kind of a hobby. And when he painted this tractor, he told me, he said, with all that red paint, it needs one little spot of green somewhere on this tractor. So he said he was going to do that and hide it on me. And to this day, I still have not found it. <laughs> 
And it bothers me that somewhere on here, there's a dot of uh, John Deere green paint um, somewhere on this tractor. I've never found it. So, uh, yeah, that was a clever way to uh, just get a, a dig in, but <laughs> it is what it is, guys. All right, take two on the right side here. This uh, suits me a lot better and I'm fussy. So it's, uh, you see the hook is facing out and we have more clearance now with the tire. And I have a glare on the camera and you can see this hook is more or less out. Same with your bungees, put the hooks out, less chance it's gonna dig into your tire. Um, I just spent $600 on a tire and rim on the other side. So I don't wanna do any damage to these tires, uh, chains. Won't do any damage if you put them on this way, and uh, we should be good to go. So, we got chains on here. I gotta get facing the right way. Got tire chains on, so a little bit of adjustment here and there. I can pull this down a little bit. And they're gonna move a little as you use it. It's That's fine. So, we got them on, and we should be good to go. So, see what happens with this snowstorm. It's supposed to start... Uh, about six o'clock tomorrow morning so um and it's supposed to snow till about uh lunchtime they're predicting five to eight inches of snow again till uh, lunchtime and then it's supposed to turn ice and then all rain we're supposed to go up to 35 degrees so it's going to be a sloppy mess and i may not even have to go out and plow a lot of it might turn to slush and melt right away uh even the next day is supposed to be warm so uh it's going to be a muddy mess and Probably didn't, didn't need to do this, but it is the uh, milk, eggs, and bread reaction like a lot of people have when there's a storm coming. They go out and uh, make sure everything's ready to go and go above and beyond. And then when the storm hits, it's, uh, <laughs> it's good that it turns out that way. You guys know what I'm talking about. Like I uh, said when I did that PTO generator video, um, that PTO shaft was greased so many times in preparation for storms that never came. <laughs> So that's all right that it works out that way. We're ready to go here regardless of the weather. So yeah, it's just going to be another uh, miserable day here. It's not cold enough to be snowy or ice and it's not warm enough to melt everything. It's kind of in that middle ground where it's just a muddy slushy mess. So <laughs> all right guys, thanks for watching. Uh, more videos to come. Uh, we'll get into some uh, different things. Like I say, I have a maintenance video on that Volkswagen car coming. Uh, just to diversify the channel a little bit. Uh, I know it's not farm related, but I want to make some uh, references to auto mechanics versus uh, farm equipment mechanics. So thanks for watching, guys.